Hey guys, Devin here with Admiral Off-Road, and today we're going to be tearing apart this Dana 30. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is remove the 10 half inch bolts that hold the diff cover on the axle. For this step, you're going to want an oil catch pan underneath to catch any of the uh, gear oil that's going to drip out. This one has been already drained by the previous owner. With the diff cover removed, we can move on to removing the axle shafts. This is usually covered up with the uh, disc brake and the brake caliper. Uh, this came without any brake components on it. Taking that off is very easy though. There are two bolts that go in right here. It's a half inch bolt. Uh, you just reach around behind, you can remove the caliper after taking off the two bolts. And then from there, there might be a couple of clips that hold on the disc brake. Once you remove those, you can slide the disc brake off, leaving you with this. Once we get to this point, we are going to remove the cotter pin, remove this cover, and then there's going to be a 36 millimeter nut that holds our axle shaft to the hub. We're going to use a set of needle nose pliers to remove the pin. All you need to do is straighten it out, and then you can uh, use a hammer to punch it through. So with the pin, there's, again, the, the cover for the nut and a little uh, metal spring that holds it in place. Now that we've got all that out of the way, we can get to the axle nut. We can use a 36 millimeter socket and a little bit of PB blaster to help it along. Didn't want to cooperate with the impact, so we'll give it a little bit of heat, see if we can loosen it up a bit. There we go, just need a little bit of heat. Behind the axle nut is a washer that must also be removed. That's really easy to do with a little magnet. And pull it out. The next thing we're going to do is remove the hub from the knuckle. I'm going to use a 13 millimeter 12 point to take off these three bolts right here. There's two that you can see and one on the back that I'll show you in a second. To get to this one, you might need to turn your U-joint a little bit, so you can grab a hold of the hub and just turn the axle, which will also rotate that U-joint, just give you a little bit more room. There's two, let's go tackle that third one. The third bolt holding on the hub is right here at the front of the axle, uh, right by the steering arm. Turn this to get a little better. With all three bolts removed, now we'll be able to remove the hub from the knuckle. Removing the hub from the axle may take a little bit of a work with the hammer, so we're going to go right here behind this part. Just give it a couple light taps. There we go, looks like we're coming. A little more. Hitting that brake cover. And we're free. So this is the hub we just took off, and now we should be able to remove our axle shafts. With the hub removed, now we can remove the axle shaft. Just be careful not to damage any of the threads. Now that we've got the axle shafts removed, we can remove our carrier and our ring gear. 
Before we do that though, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of brake cleaner just to clean everything out and make it a little less messy. With the axle shafts removed, now we can remove our carrier, which holds our ring gear and our spider gears. To do that, we have to take off these two bearing caps held in by uh, four uh, five-eighths bolts. Be careful when you do this, these bearing caps have to go on the same side and the same direction as they came off. So it's a good idea to mark them. Um, that way you can put them back on the same way they came off because they only fit one way. Now that we've got the bearing caps out of the way, we should be able to remove the carrier. Watch out, there's going to be um, some bearings here and possibly some shims, so you want to keep all those together. There we go. Nice. So here's the carrier that rides on the inside. It spins on these bearings, and you can see inside is the pinion gear. So when your drive shaft is turning, it's going to turn the pinion, which turns the ring gear which then is going to turn your axle shafts. Now we can take off our pinion. To do that, we're going to need to support the yoke. I'm doing that with this stand here, and I'm going to put an impact with an inch and an eighth uh, socket on it to remove the nut. With a little bit of hope with a torch, we finally were able to get the nut off. Now if I move this, we can take off the yoke, and there's a little uh, washer in there that you just saw, and I can push the uh, pinion through the housing. With, there we go. And there's the pinion. The last thing we're going to do today is take out the pinion seal and a couple of the races that hold the pinion in place. They do make a special seal puller to pull these pinion seals. Um, but this one is already damaged and leaking, so I don't really care if it gets even more damaged. Um, the only thing I want to be careful of is not to scratch anything on the inside. I'm just going to use a screwdriver and pry it out. But again, if you really, really want to save your pinion seal, I wouldn't. Uh, if you're already this far into th this teardown, I would just replace this anyway. Um, but they do, again, make a special tool for this. I'm just going to use a uh, pry bar and pry it out. There we go. Not too bad. And then I can get to... Another set of uh, bearings here with another seal or a uh, shim there. And down inside, there's a couple more shims. I want to keep track of those if I want to reuse all this, um, which I won't, but keep track of it. There we go. And then all that's left is a couple of races and we'll be done. So you saw there, I did end up having to use a metal punch to remove the races. Uh, if you're replacing your bearings, it's a great idea to replace your races as well. The races and the bearings kind of end up wearing together, so replacing one without the other just isn't a good idea. Uh, the only reason to remove your race is to replace them anyway, so if you damage your races while you're removing them, that's okay. Uh, just make sure you don't damage the metal of the axle itself around the races. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And if you like what you saw here, please like and subscribe.
If you want to see a Dana 35 teardown, go ahead and click over here. And if you want to know how to install LED lights inside of your Cherokee, click over here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.